Hey there you guys, welcome back to my channel. So I thought I would do a quick, uh, easy watercolor floral lesson that you might really enjoy. If you have signed up for my watercolor florals for beginners, I would love to have you try this exercise as well as the ones in the course. If you haven't signed up yet and you wanna check out the course, I would love to have you guys go sign up. It's at a um, really great price right now as we're just loading in all of the videos. It's a one-time fee and you have lifetime access and all of the new videos that I add to it, you get those included as well. So many, many really cool things to learn. So go and try it. Anyway, I'm gonna start with uh, quickly wetting my paper. This is, oops, I, this is 100% cotton. Uh, this one is Fabriano. I actually got these at $19.95, which was like an amazing deal on sale. So always keep your eyes open for like Arches or um, Artistico Fabriano. As long as it's 100% cotton, if you can get it at this price, it's such a good, good, good price for sale. So I'm kind of like randomly wetting my paper. It is not running. Um, you definitely don't need for it to be running. You can see how there's like just kind of areas that are wet, more wet than others. And there's like a light mist over the rest. I'm going to grab some um, ultramarine. This one is uh, ultramarine finest by Schminka. And I like it because it's granulating, but it's not heavily staining. And I find that it's kind of fun to paint with. So I'm just going to put it in my palette and wet it down really, really well. And then we're just going to kind of roll it here over the background just for a fun effect, maybe on one side. We'll kind of get a little heavier with it. And I'm going to just start like figuring out what kind of vase I want to maybe I'm going to leave it white and paint around it. So we'll just give it like a little shape here and then soften at the bottom. Um, then maybe through it, I'll just put some water in there and that's it. Okay. So now on this top area, we can drop in a little bit more color in some of the areas, but what I want you to do first is imagine what your flower arrangement is going to be like. So right now I'm still kind of like developing it and thinking about the flowers. I'm going to go ahead and uh, make some little white spaces for my flowers. So I think I'm going to just put one right here. So I'm just taking a cloth or a clean paper and drying that out. You can easily, if you feel like it's not wet enough and you want more white, then you can just spray it with your water bottle and get it. And sometimes you'll get these really lovely backgrounds that I love so much about watercolor. It's really fun. So let's just spray another little area here and dry it. And see, it's bringing it right back to white. This really like does not work on cheap paper. So if you're struggling, it's probably the paper or really inexpensive paints. So you have to kind of test out your paints too, because certain paints are going to give you more of a hard time. And I'm not rubbing the paper. I'm just bringing them out like that because uh, that just works a whole lot better for me. I don't like to disturb my paper too much. And this is why, the reason why I do it is I love the softness of it. And I, I hate the fact that um, things like masking fluid just destroy paper. It just really just rubs it. You know, they spend like 20 minutes trying to get this stuff off. And to me, that's a waste of my painting time. And it's, it's not like what that does to me is it makes me feel like uptight. It makes me feel just stressed instead of having this nice little meditative moment, you know, with my, um, with my watercolors. So I like really bold color. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of add in just a little more here. And this is my ultramarine finest. I want everything to kind of be really, really loose. So I'm, I'm purposely letting it bleed and letting it do stuff. If you don't like the way this looks, you can easily just kind of take a cloth and 
and take that right out. But I actually want this to bleed. And if, in fact, if I see that it's not bleeding enough, I will probably even um, add some more water to it. But I'm just kind of keeping it as loose as possible and getting some more color in some of these areas. Just because I want that beautiful, loose, soft kind of style. I think you really get to a point with these things where you've done enough of them where you kind of know what the outcome is that you want and, you know, you can just kind of make a lot of things happen just by, you know, knowing what that vision is. So as this is drying, I'm going to think about what colors I want. I think I usually start with a yellow because I really love yellows and golds. Um, Hans is one of my favorite ones because it's like a low staining yellow color. And I find that I, I can't really go wrong with it. You know, I usually, I use it. It adds a lot of life and a lot of beauty. As you can tell, it's, it looks really, really bright here, but it does have a warmth to it. And it's very easily warmed up with like a little bit of Quinn gold. So I'm going to take a little Quinn gold and just kind of splash that into my yellow. And I'm just rolling my brush. Um, it's just something I really like to do. I find that it makes the colors very random, randomly applied, and it keeps things real loose. Now you don't want the yellow to mix too much with the blue because it is going to make a green. But in this case scenario, that's not really a bad thing because Ultramarine's Finest makes a very, very warm, really neat green. So um, having that mix with the yellow, you can see how beautiful the green actually comes. So I'm not really scared of it. It actually, um, I'm just going to go ahead and, you know, drag some through while it's wet. Uh, just to get some of my greens in here because I know I need a lot of greens. It's a floral. We'll put some in the vase, just like that. Put a lot more. And this is just a really fun, splashy, very loose tutorial. Nothing too crazy. So as you can tell, I'm kind of like letting it splash around. I'm, I'm uh, letting it do what it wants because when you add yellows or even greens to blues that it's just going to stay in this lovely same color family you know so it's it's nothing that you need to be afraid of you can just go ahead and and just put it where you like um i find that in some of these loose florals the more greens the better and you know it's kind of like a nice first layer you can decide if you want to do even more with it later you know you can uh, deepen up the green just by adding a little more ultra. But I love the way this look. I think it's just the coolest uh, blue to use, you know. And again, if this is driving you crazy here, then just go over it with a little bit of darker color and it will take over. You know, if you feel like you're losing some of your shape, if you feel like it's... Uh, it's the gravity's pulling it down too much, then you can just easily stop it just by stopping it like that and then reestablishing your line. So there's a lot of things you can do. I can even kind of brush through my vase here a little bit. There we go. Can even take a little bit more and get a little back run going down the page with some deeper letting it mix in with those greens and again you want to establish more dark down here you can do that you can even go in to your greens and kind of add a lot more darks or even some beautiful dark um dark splotches for flowers. Just while it's all moving around, I'm just going to kind of give it some little flower shapies there. And maybe we'll do one here. 
you know, like a, just kind of a wildflower kind of look coming out of that one. Here we go. So you can see how it's shaping up really nicely. And we're still in that loose phase, you know, while everything kind of dries. So, so far I've done yellows and blues and that makes green because the mix makes a green, which I can't get wrong with, right? <laughs> so far I'm kind of like no brainer. And that's why this is so easy and just going to paint itself. Um, now we got to figure out what we want to do with our florals. Do we want to go more orange? Do we want to go more pink? I don't know. I'm kind of feeling like a Quinn Rose would be really neat here. So let's just see. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. I like that. So I'm just going to maybe give it some strikes or some rolls. Anything just easy that is not really committing to a certain shape. I'm just kind of going to let the my big beautiful brush here which is from the green set, the Escoda. Uh, this is a green set from Escoda that comes with this brush, size 16. I love it. It's so cool. It comes with a bright square brush. These are great for florals, actually. If you needed to choose one set for florals, I think this is a really good set because you've also got this long round with a point, size 4, Ultimo, and they're great watercolor brushes. Okay, so we got this layer here, and then on this one, I think I'll add just a little couple of swoops to it. And I don't know, maybe we'll just do a little flower down here, just kind of coming off the side. Lovely. See, and just by rolling the brush, you never kind of, it's, it's random. You're not going to be able to manipulate it too much. It's going to keep it really nice and loose and just develop the flower shapes. And look at how pretty that is. Let's put some more in here and just keep it splashy, you know, make it, make it splashy. So you're moving the eye around, you know what I mean? You're, you're kind of creating this scenario where people are like, Oh, look, that's really cool. There's another one there. Okay. So that's a lot of pink. I think we're good with the pink. I don't know. It's up to you. Uh, you could have used orange too. Now, I really love the way this looks. I'm not going to touch that one. I think that looks amazing. Actually, these all look amazing. There's so many things I could do. And you can see here, some of the flower is pulling. Now, if I didn't want it to pull, all I would have to do is take a clean brush and just kind of go against the watercolor and push it a little bit in the other direction and then dry it off on a towel. And that's going to bring some of that white space right back. And as long as you do that before it dries completely, um, you're going to have this beautiful relief look to it. You know, I really like it when it bleeds. I just love the way it looks. I love the way watercolor softens with the bleed and on 100% cotton paper. It looks amazing. In fact, I usually just kind of take whatever is there and I just kind of uh, I love to just kind of dot my brush to like create even more looser shapes coming off of the florals. And a lot of times like in my watercolor for beginners, my floral class, I do a lot of like splashy, really fun um, shapes that are really good. Like I just recorded this one tonight. Cause I think it turned out really good. So I just did this one for the course. So if you want to learn how to do this one, you can get it in the watercolor floral for beginners class. And another one that I did that's kind of like this is this, this splashy one and this one and everybody loves them. They're like so excited, but you'll also get to learn how to do like these ones which give you a lot of that negative painting and then some softer versions. So there's so much that we can do uh, with florals and watercolor. I love the way this looks. I love the like deeper. I think the things that add a lot of value to this are the deeper blues where we went back in after that layer kind of wasn't developed yet and how it mixed with some of the greens and the yellows just naturally. So you don't exactly know that you're looking at leaves, you know, and I kind of really love that. Um, 
In fact, I think I'm going to take some more Hansa and mix it with the um, ultramarine and get this really bright green and just kind of drop it in a few little areas here and let it just, you know, let it just bleed a little bit and maybe just give some of these stems back some more life. And I'll just add it in some little areas that might look like a, um, you know, the base of the flower. Just a little couple little areas of green that maybe, you know, some of this is getting lighter. So I think it's kind of neat to have the appearance of what would be um, some leaves coming off. But again, I want to keep it really soft and very loose. I want you, you know, I want the, the eye to put it together. I don't want to like do it for you. So this is going to be more implied. It's really fun to, you know, to do stuff like this because you just watching the, the magic of watercolor, just do what it does. I try in all of my courses that I do to come up with exercises in ways that will make you relax instead of struggle with watercolor and get really frustrated because, you know, I remember when I was first starting, um, with watercolor and even though I was pretty good at painting, I, I still watercolor, you know, it has a mind of its own. It does different things. And as you can see, I can completely change a painting, uh, just depending on what I want to do with it. I can add more ultra and, you know, get a little darker in areas and, you know, bring in that texture, which, you know, is fun. I love that. Now that this is starting to dry, I can even shape out that vase and just see how I just gave it like just a bit more. And then I can even uh, take more of a line and come across there and just give the feeling of, you know, that, that shape re being a little bit more reinforced. I think the big thing is I'm keeping these white spaces here because they're there and they, they worked out great. You know, they just, they aren't, but I do see that the green is starting to go into here. So to get rid of that, I'm just going to take the pink and just push that pink up against that yellow. Now, if this was like core, core watercolor will definitely push up against everything. Um, so whenever you're using core, be careful because it will work. Like it literally pushes things out of the way. But in this area, uh, as this quin dries, I can actually use it just to get another layer, get some of these a little bit darker in areas that I want them to be darker. And if I feel that anything's kind of pushing, um, pushing it out of the way in not a good way where like this one's turning purple, which I really like, it's pretty. But on these greens, if I don't want them, then I'm just kind of pushing up against them with a little more. All right. You know what? I love it. I think we're good. I'm going to clean up a couple of areas here. So in one, it's bleeding right there. This green's really taken over. So I'm just going to dry it, take a little extra, and depending on what I want it to do, maybe just put a little bit of like thicker paint, like coffee paint, I'm looking for any other areas that are bleeding in a way that I feel like interferes with the shape a little bit, even though this is very loose shape, like down here. I love it, but I just wanted that to be a little stronger and maybe here. So dry it first and either leave it, you know, or put that, put that color back in this one, this yellow and green is still kind of pushing at my flower. So I'm going to go ahead and dry it. Actually, I love the way that just looked, looks really good, but I'm still going to give it a little bit more. All right. And there you go. We got a beautiful looking, really cool, loose floral. 
I hope you guys like this. I hope you enjoyed it. Play with your colors and come over to my group page and share what you got with me. I would love to see uh, what you come up with. And if you just, you know, used it and had fun, even doing the exact same one that I did. And I'm totally encouraging you to copy me because you can do this a million times and get something different every time. And literally you will find your own style eventually once you start doing exercises and tutorials over and over again. So I'm always looking to help you get to that original place where you're just banging out beautiful paintings and just so proud of it. And then we're going to show you how to sell them. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. Happy painting. Bye.